Welcome to Compilation Arena. Please like and subscribe, it really helps me keep going. You can comment about anything and everything. I'm here to listen. If you have difficulty understanding Japanese words pronunciation, please enable subtitles. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Web Novel Chapter 197, Demon vs. Angel As I was observing the battle between Milim and the silver-haired angel from the skies, I began to think that something was amiss. The silver-haired angel is definitely using Justice King Michael's castle guard. Confident that she'll be unaffected, she guides Milim's attacks into causing damage to the surroundings. This is a major problem of course. But despite that, visually, the damage caused seems to be less than expected. Hey, if Milim were dishing out full power attacks, wouldn't there be far more damage than what we're seeing now? Affirmative. If it was a real attack by Milim Nava, she would reduce her castle to ashes in an instant. Of the predicted possibilities, the damage may have been reduced from the effects of Castle Guard. Or, Milim Nava still retains her sanity, and is controlling her output. Fumu. So that's it huh? Although she is emanating waves of anger that are enough to cause the atmosphere to shudder, there were no signs of her unleashing ultra-high output attacks. Only the castle tower was blown away at the start of the battle. It would be best to assume she still hasn't lost her sanity, and is suppressing her rage. Which is also why Kama Justice King Michael's domination abilities have not been activated. If Milim were to have totally lost her sanity due to her rage, she would have been dominated almost immediately. Diablo Ha! Ah, I am here. From my summons, Diablo appeared behind me, ready to respond. Kneeling behind him, were the three remaining Devil Lords. Diablo! You guys, go and get rid of the other four angels. After that's done, go defeat Vega. Though I sent Gabita, just him alone is kinda worrying. Also, one of you shall stay and be my support. Understood. We will finish up shortly, and move to support Rimuru-sama. The representative Diablo answered, Testrosa and Co. Also nodded in unison. Though those angels are on par with awakened demon lords, the demons are the more combat-oriented ones among my guardian class followers. It'll be fine to leave this to them. They are even in numbers, and Diablo is around too. I can believe they'll succeed. I'll leave that to you guys then. After saying so, I began flying towards Milim. As for the ones left behind, they seem to have begun arguing about who is going to be my support. It was fortunate that I didn't notice this. Whoever won the spot, is really of little importance. Among the ones who remained, a winner emerged from their peaceful discussion. Diablo showed a gentlemanly smile, as he glares at the others. TCH. And the like could be heard from the others, but the three of them didn't openly protest. Kufufufufu. As expected, this went smoothly all thanks to your prudence. A highly satisfied Diablo was smiling. Then, with a glance, he turned his attention to the four angels with disinterest. Velda's minions, four of the apostles of the end. They were known as the Executioner's Seven Angels of Crucifixion, and were the combat team in charge of close quarters combat. This time, they were dispatched under Lucia's direct command. As long as she had Castle Guard, Lucia's safety is assured. They were around as a form of insurance. But, their main aim, was to be Lucia's sword. The ultimate skill Justice King Michael has almost no means of directly attacking. In other words, the executioners are to be Lucia's hands and feet, weapons for the purpose of destroying enemies. Michael's will, which has now became Lucia's ego, chose them for this purpose. Triunyodo, who wields a war hammer imbued with the lightning element, is a healthy muscular man. Arya, who wields a great axe imbued with the fire element, has the looks of a small framed girl. Oruka, who wields a trident imbued with the water element is a pretty lady with a slim and prim body. Priscilla, who wields the nine tail, an item imbued with a wind element, is average in build and height, has a prominent large bosom, 
Though her semi-closed eyes leave an impression, she gives off an androgynous air. 1. The four of them, were calm and composed even when Diablo and Co. suddenly appeared. What that showed, was the confidence of the absolute strongest beings. Their pride, as beings that have attained the powers of the highest class, seraphims. The demons and angels sized each other up, and quietly looked at one another. Fumu. We have no time for games. Let's end this quickly. The first to speak, was Diablo. Testa, Ullan Carrera agreed. And this quickly, you say? Don't make me laugh puny demons. There's no way you demons who have restricted evolutions, are able to reach us seraphims, the highest of the angels. For us who have been granted the powers of seraphims from Veldasama, we are the strongest existences, vastly superior to the mass-produced army. We easily outclass you lot. Though it seems you bunch have become demon lord class, and the ender evolutions are still incomplete. You shouldn't be letting your arrogance get to your head simply because you've been upgraded to demon lords from arc demons. Treyuni Oto bellowed. To his words, Diablo felt something was amiss. Does the opposing boss Velda, not know that they have reached the devil lord class? This would be a joke, if that was the case. If it was their master Imaru, he would have identified them in one glance. Unless. Information has not been shared amongst them, that seems to be the case. Because of his absolute confidence in himself, he was lax in doing a matter as trivial as sharing information. The ego of the strong, huh? On that point, Rimuru Sama has his bases covered. As expected. Kufufufufufufufu. Diablo was thoroughly ecstatic, as he thought of their master who meticulously worked to set up a network to disseminate and share information, no matter the kind of information. As his mood has greatly improved, Diablo's eyes turned gentle, towards the fools before him. Hey, Diablo. Why you're so happy? Didn't we just get dissed by the other side? Ultima. Kufufufufu. It's because of such matters, that you still have a ways to go. Even from the words of those foolish beings, we can pick out points that show us how great our master is. Eh? You fu 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 fu. That's right, as expected, you seem to have noticed too, Diablo. Of course, Testrasa. I shall leave those beings in your merciful hands. If I were to do it, I'd cause them to suffer. You'd be able to purge them with no such pains. Era, are you sure about that? Well wait a second. I still don't really get what you two are talking about. Dot. What this means, is that Diablo is saying he'll let us have his share. Testrasa very kindly, began explaining to Ultima. About how their master great demon Lord Rimuru, puts great faith into his subordinates. After listening to the explanation, Ultima's eyes sparkled and exclaimed loudly. So that's it. So what you're saying? is that Rimuru Sama is way higher class than them. Testa nodded satisfied. Though she also noticed that Ultima's understanding is slightly off, it's not a problem as of now. As she has reaffirmed the greatness of their master great demon Lord Rimuru, it is satisfactory for now. Hold up. What's this bullshit you bunch are spouting? Huh? You pathetic demons, do it to us highest class angels? Purge us without suffering? Don't make me laugh. Due to the insulting words from the demons, Arya screamed as she was totally pissed. She unholstered her great axe, a weapon that didn't seem to fit her small build, and assumed a stance while gripping it. With a burning anger lit in her eyes, while her hair was standing on end. It's a taunt. Calm down, Arya. The slim beauty Oruka. Cut in on Arya while she glared at the demons with her cold eyes. But... The trident she was holding had aqua-colored waves swirling about intensely from within. Though her thoughts were calm, on the inside she was just as furious. You fu 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 fu. It seems that punishment for some naughty kids is needed from Big Sis here. Priscilla declared with a smile. Though it wasn't particularly planned, the one-sided words from the demons have succeeded in angering the easy-going Priscilla too. Seeing that his comrades have also been angered, 
Chiryuni Odo made his move and took a step forward. Lightning raged across his body, showing his anger for him. Well wait up a little. I just had the best idea. You want to hear it don't you? Before the angered angels, was Carrera who spoke out without a care for the mood. Frankly, I got no interest in you guys at all. There's that fool named Vega who's rampaging about over at that side, I got some business with him. So, I'm going pass on you guys as well. Speaking as though this has already been accepted, was Carrera's suggestion. To what Carrera has proposed. Era? Are you sure about that, Carrera? Testa. Eh? Then, does that mean we each get two of them? Ultima. Were the jovial responses from Testa and Dull. In contrast to that. Don't be underestimating us, lowly demon filth. Kill. Ima definitely kill you all. Fumu, looks like there's no other choice. I shall have to carve the painful truth into your bodies. That just now, it got Big Sis all fired up. The members of the executioners, were all painted red in anger. Even among the heavenly armies, they were considered the most powerful existences, as members of the apostles of the end, and part of the combat specialized executioners. To be looked down upon to this level, was unexpected for them. Even in their previous life as members under Yuki's direct command, they were already the most capable members then. Though they were not part of the rank battles in the Empire, they had the confidence to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Royal Knights. Having attained the powers of a Seraph from now, each of them have awakened to the ultimate skill master weapon 2, and are confident that no being that walks the lands could be a worthy foe. The weapons they each wield, is proof of their abilities. A weapon said to be more powerful than any physically existing god class weapon. With that pride on the line, they have no intention of giving any quarter to the demons. We bestow upon you all, death. That, is the wish of our creator, Vildasama. Together with Dreyuni Odo's battle cry, the other members all moved in unison. With their weapons on hand, they take their stance. On the other hand, the demons. Alright, the axe and spear for me. Era, is that so? Well, I don't really mind any of them. As though a child picking which toy to have fun with. Ultima voiced out who she intends to face. She was fine so long as she gets someone to battle against, was Testros's reaction. Though it is their attitude that is angering the angel side thus, this is but the norm for the demons. Kufufufufu. Now then, if you girls really get in a pinch, do call for help. You poor girls will not be abandoned. Like that it ever happened. Right. It seems there's a real need to settle things with you someday, Diablo. After the brief exchange, Diablo took off towards Rimuru without looking back. As for Carrera. K then, I'll be making my move too. There won't be a need to leave your share right? Yay. We'll make do with these fellas here. Testa. Un. Carrera, if you don't hurry, Gobita's gonna end up getting all the best stuff you know? Ultima. I'm fairly worried about that too. No matter what's said and done, you can't underestimate that guy. Carrera nods, while frowning. Just as Ultima said, her reason for foregoing the angels was because worried Gabita might end up actually defeating Vega. Though her thoughts have been slightly revealed, there's nothing she can do about it for the moment. Vega has defiled her sacred duel. To Carrera that was something totally unforgivable. Though it can't be helped if Gabita really does defeat him, there's the part of her Carrera that wants to make him Vega pay back in spades for. For that reason, Carrera left the current area promptly. Similar to Diablo, she had totally no worries for her colleagues. As the ruling class of the demons, she had the utmost confidence that victory will not elude them. And thus, Testrosa vs. Treyuni Oto and Priscilla. Ultima vs. Arya and Oruka. These two battles began. Dot. The victor was decided almost instantly. Letting his anger propel him, Treyuni Odo unleashed his most powerful attack lightning bomber. But, that location was already under Testros's ultimate skill Lekking Belial's territory. Lording over life and death, 
a death blade appeared in Testros's hand, and Triunioto was split in two. The lightning bomber tech from the war hammer that was swung down, was caught by Testa's left hand, and was changing into a shining clump of energy. But, Testa gripped the energy clump without any problems, and mixed in some of her own magic. Towards the crumpling remains of Triunioto. You can have this back. She tossed at energy, which has turned into superheated plasma, with those parting words. Flashes of light, compression, destruction. Treyuni Odo perished, with next to nothing left of his former body. Having lost her window to attack as Priscilla's timing was off, she was shocked at what happened. H-E-E-I. She let out an involuntary scream. Impossible. What just happened shouldn't have been possible. The total energy levels of both sides, though their magical and spiritual power were of different natures, should have been at similar levels. Despite that fact, the jarring difference in their battle prowess, just seemed downright absurd. If there was little difference in total energy levels, the side with a higher evolution should have the upper hand. Plus, they were battling two to one in their favor, thoughts of defeat never crossed their minds. Priscilla's judgment of the situation was flipped over instantly. In an overpowering display by the woman before her. Era, what's wrong? Do come at me too. I shall be your gentle opponent. The demon named Testrasa, slowly walked towards Priscilla, with a smile on her face. S stop. Don't come any closer. Big Sis here apologizes. I'm apologizing alright? Era? Weren't you the one who said something about punishment for bad kids? I'm sorry, it was improper on my part. Big Sis here, was getting ahead of herself. 3. As Priscilla became frenzied, she broke down sobbing and screamed. Her fighting spirit was broken at light speed. One's calm thoughts halt in the face of monsters of unimaginable proportions. Treyuni Odo was a reliable companion. He would be the one standing at the front lines, giving his allies the support of an unyielding shield, no matter what kind of battle it was. Even he, who was already so reliable, attained an angel's power and has supposedly became incomparable to his past self. Priscilla herself was no slouch and showed pride as one who is capable, but even she herself has noticed that she wasn't able to match Triunyodo, even if she battled with everything she had. That strong companion Triunyodo, was insta-killed without any proper retaliation, right in front of her, it wasn't surprising Priscilla would fall into a state of panic. Era Era this makes it look like I'm bullying you doesn't it? Now now, I promised to finish you all without suffering did I not? It's really okay to be more reassured. At that moment, Priscilla could be considered lucky, as Testrosa was in a really good mood. P please forgive me. I promise to not go against your greatness anymore. If you let me go, I'll give you anything, anything other than my life. She looks down on Priscilla who was truly begging for her life, sunk by her own fear, and made her decision. In that case, I'll take it then. Your angel's power, that is. I shall let you go, in exchange for that. Your emotions of fear, are absolutely delectable too. As amazingly rare as it is, Testrasa let Priscilla go, as she herself said. What that showed, was simply her not dirtying her own hands, and couldn't care less whatever happened to Priscilla after this. The power of a seraphim, this might turn out to be useful for Rimuru Sama. Having decided as such, she robs Priscilla of her angel's power, and left her be. What was unexpected for Testa, was that she ended up getting the ultimate skill master weapon, which was supposed to be part of the angel's power. The skill was then unified into Hakeem Belial and becomes the base for her to materialize a death whip. For Testrasa, who conducts herself as though a queen, this weapon was a great fit for her. And so, the battle of, Testrasa vs Treyuni Oto and Priscilla, came to its end. Priscilla was inelegantly crawling away, and left the battlefield. At that time, what was unlucky for Priscilla, was her choice to meet up with Vega. Now that she has lost her powers, 
she has decided on a course of action that could give her protection. Sadly, Vega was giving his attention to his battle, and checking who was his allies or enemies was the least of his priorities. The result, was that Priscilla ended up getting devoured by Vega and perished, but that was something that was unrelated to Testros's actions. Similarly for Ultima, her battle ended quick and easy. Using one hand to parry away Arya's flame-clad great axe, she pierced Arya with a bloody bite. That attack alone was fatal, and Arya perishes. Oruka, who was shocked at what happened, lost sight of Ultima for a brief moment, and then suddenly from behind her. And, done. Was what she heard. At the same time, she felt a burning pain in her chest. What? Eh? Just when did she? And that was Oruka's last thoughts. The two of them, were slaughtered by the little girl Ultima, unable to even retaliate. As there was no conversation whatsoever, she finished up even faster than Testrasa did. For the two of them who were killed, having died without feeling any pain or fear could be said to be the only silver lining, if you could call it one. Ultima unintentionally ended up doing what the Ablo wanted. The Battle of Ultima vs Arya and Oruka, ended near instantly after it began. Moments later. You know, those fellas, weren't they too weak despite their energy levels? You're right. But, all this has been expected by Rimuru sama Just having attained power, doesn't mean much as it is. We have just experienced that ourselves. The thought that angels would become more proficient given the time, is likely to be true. But, just how much time that would take, is another matter altogether. I know right. The difference between us and them can't be bridged that easily, cause we lived real long and got lots of experience. Such was the conversation between the two. As predicted by Seal, angels begin their growth after gaining their lost ego. But, expectedly, tangible growth in short periods of time is impossible. Even if they do gain human-like levels of ego, there will always be limits to individual souls. Plus, the level of experience, would almost always pale in comparison to the demons. The soul of a mere mortal, would never be able to bring out the true power of an angel, much less the highest seraphim. If it were at least a saint, who has gained a fair amount of experience from being immortal, then things would have been different. Thus, the demon's battles end. Testa and Elf then began moving towards the next objective of defeating Vega.